So let's talk about so-called dusting attacks. What are they, how do they work, and how can you protect yourself? Now let's talk in general about attacks. Normally attacks are with a very short time horizon. Um, time horizon basically, well, you attack and you steal something straight away. And most of the time, these are the attacks that are really, really obvious. Now, over time, we've got to know a lot of those attacks, right? We know where someone steals a private key, where someone, I don't know, attacks a, a wallet, where someone gets your API key to an exchange, gets your password, uh, does a phishing attack, does some social engineering. The more sophisticated those attacks get, generally, the more you can steal and the less obvious it is for the victims. Now, how do those dusting attacks work? Well, basically, what you're trying to do in a dusting attack is you are trying to understand the identity of the users or of the addresses. And then you have different options. If you really know who owns an address or who is someone, you have completely different options. If you're the government and you know this, well, obviously, you know exactly who is, tax ev who is evading taxes and who doesn't. But if you are an attacker and you know the identities, you can do a couple of things. You could do some social engineering attack. You can do blackmailing because you could go and say, hey, I know this person has 10 Bitcoins, so let's kind of blackmail this person somehow. Um, and you can obviously sell the data if you notice. But so how does this work? For it, because we hear that, for example, Bitcoin is anonymous. Well, it's not really anonymous. It's actually pseudo-anonymous. And the reason is because it's completely transparent. Now, here's the thing, and this is something that I've been warning a lot about. And it's basically, most people are worried that quantum computers are able in the future to crack the encryption. But this is, yeah, it's in theory possible, but in practic practically, it's not really relevant. But what is relevant is our privacy, it's our data. Because if I know a few participants in a blockchain and they interact with each other, and I have a smart enough computer and I have enough information, I can understand the identity of everyone in there and privacy goes to zero and that's why sued anonymous. Now with dusting attacks and you can imagine them, imagine like the lasers, right? You have like these lasers in the movies and you don't see the laser. So what do people do? They take a bit of dust and they blow it in and then you see all the lasers in there and then you can see oh, where to walk. And it's very similar in the crypto space. Just here, the dust is literally crypto dust. So we're talking about sending someone a few Satoshis. So what these attackers do, they send a few Satoshis to certain addresses. And you can do this to thousands of addresses because Satoshis are pretty much worthless. So not worthless, but they're really, really cheap, right? Uh, they're 0 0.00000 something cents. Obviously, 100 million Satoshis become a Bitcoin, so then they get worth a lot. But you send a few Satoshis to a lot, a lot of people. And then you see what happens. You send different amounts. And then you see on social media, someone says, hey, I just got this how many Satoshis. Do you know where this is from? Poop, this pops up and you know, ah, okay, this is the, the social media account. This is the associated address. Then maybe these Satoshis start moving. Maybe they get moved to another address. And you're like, ah, okay. So here's one address, there's another address. And so if you do this with a lot, a lot of different addresses, then what happens is suddenly you get a picture of how this entire infrastructure and how the entire network looks like. And then you can use this obviously either to sell the data, you can attack them, you might know their identities and you could kind of do some social engineering attacks and then suddenly you can start working there. And in the past, we've seen this a lot with Bitcoin. Now recently we see this with Litecoin, we see this with many, many coins. And the only way you can really protect yourself, I mean, anyone can send you coins, right? So it's very difficult. But the only way to protect yourself is just not to send this dust anywhere. So you just have this dust and you're not moving it anywhere. That's the only way how you can kind of protect yourself against it. There are certain wallets that as soon as you have a certain amount come in, this wallet gives you a warning or it puts it on a separate uh, UTXO on a separate kind of address where then you're not going to move these small amounts and thereby you just leave them there. Because if the amount stays there and it's ridiculous small amounts, if we're talking about fractions of cents, um, then the attackers can't really get anything out of it. And that's pretty much the only thing you can do. Now, obviously, there's a question, what uh, are the attackers possibly, they, they're not going to get your private key, they can't steal anything directly. But with a long time horizon, right, more and more is possible. And especially if they see larger addresses, right, uh, addresses with uh, more coins on them, it gets very interesting to understand, huh, who is this guy with 10 Bitcoins? Ah, okay, let's send him and see what happens. Ah, this, this person, and suddenly you know the identity, and you can kind of do this. Oh, who's someone with 100 Bitcoins? And this is where it gets very, very tricky. So if you look at your account and suddenly you receive from unknown a few Satoshis, maybe a few hundred or a few thousand Satoshis, which is nothing. I mean, we're not even talking about fractions of cents. This is so little. 
you have to be really, really careful. And I would not forward these coins somewhere. Um, I would just be very, very, very careful in not touching them and just ignoring that and not moving it anywhere. Um, and if you move it somewhere, then don't move it straight away to an exchange or don't move it straight away somewhere where, well, people can kind of deduce the identity. But maybe move it somewhere where either through a mixer or somewhere where you know people are not going to uh, know your identity if you want to stay private. Um, if you have any questions or if something was not answered to dusting attacks, then let me know in the comments below or on Twitter or Facebook. Just comment and I'm happy to kind of reply to those. But I think in, in general, if you just understand the picture of the lasers, someone blowing dust into the lasers, making everything visible, that's exactly the same way as they are doing it in blockchain. And then the question is, what do they do with this information? Most of the time, it's about understanding the identity. Either they're blackmailing this person, social engineering, or if it's the government. Well, it's just about tax evasion, for example. A lot, a lot of possibilities. Not such short-sighted attacks. These are very sophisticated long-term attacks. And, uh, well, that's why they are so dangerous and can be very, very powerful. If you have any questions, let me know. Let me know in the chat right now. Other than that, I'll see you at the next video. Please subscribe to the channels. Subscribe to my podcast. Please give me a feedback on the podcast. Give me a thumbs up. Retweet this. Share this. I think people need to know this is so, so, so important. And with that, see you at the next video. Yours truly, Julian. Thank you.